the last few weeks we've been doing uh, studies and they've been on murder and killing. And this was like the last week that Rachel will be in college. So tonight I'm going to biblically whip the scriptures. I'm going to attack the Jehovah Witnesses in their belief of their peacefulness a following of Jesus Christ why they do not do military service combat and non-combat can I make a personal word of saying to that statement you're a coward but we'll look at the Bible I have no respect for Jehovah Witnesses who send millions of people off into hell that they don't even believe in. And the Bible speaks about hell. So in the Bible, what the Jehovah Witnesses do not believe in their stand is a violation of the scriptures themselves. And we'll take the King James Bible and we'll do the attack. 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 13. And Joab, David's leader, the son of Zuriah, and the servants of David went out and met together by the pool of Gideon. And they sat down, the one on the one side of the pool, and the other on the other side of the pool. And Abner, the leader of Israel, said to Joab, the other leader, let the young men now rise and play, play. There's a word play for you in the Bible. It's wartime, war games. You get the war games? You know where war games come from? It comes from the King James 16 and 11 Bible, let play before us. And Joab said, let them arise. Then there arose and went up by number twelve of Benjamin, which pertain to Ishbodesh, which is the ruler presently at this time of Israel, the son of Saul, and the twelve servants of David. And they caught every one his fellow by the head, and thrust his sword in the fellow's side, so they fell down together. Wherefore the place was called Hekath. Hazram, which is in Gibeah. And there was a very sore battle that day. And Abner, captain, was beaten. And the men of Israel before the servants of David. Men of Israel be north. And there were three sons of Zuriah, which is David's aunt. Joab, Abishai, and Ashahil. And Ashahil was light of foot as a wild rope. He could run. He could. Ashahil uh, pursued after Abner, a military captain, during the war game. And in going, he turned not to the right hand, nor to the left, but followed after Abner. His goal is I'm going to get the cat commander, I'm going for the gold. Abner looked behind him and said, Art thou after him? He said, Answer, I am. And Abner said to him, Turn thee aside to the right hand or to the left, and lay thy hand on one of the young men, the soldiers. Take ye his armor. Battle, war. Okay. But Asher would not turn aside from following him. And Abner again to Ashnel, Turn thee aside from following me, wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? How then should I hold up my face to Joab, thy brother? How though he refused to turn aside? Wherefore Abner, with the hinder end of his spear, smote him at the heel, under the fifth rib, that the spear came out behind him. 
and he fell down there and died in the same place. Now what happened is Asahel is running after Abner. And Abner, I'm not, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, Abner. And Abner gives him two warnings. Hey man, listen, go somewhere else. Get someone else. No, nope, I'm going to get you. So while they're running, Abner takes his spear and pokes it behind him. And it strikes Asahel under his fifth rib. And Asahel dies in combat. War games. Verse 30. I would assume the Jehovah Witness have read their Bible. And Joab returned from following Abner. When he had gathered all the people together, they lacked of David's servants, 19 men in Asherah. So 19 men and Joab's brother is dead. But the servants of David had smitten Benjamin, war games, of Asherah's men, so that three hundred and three score men died. It was a slaughter. And they took up Asahel and buried him in the sepulchre of his father, which is in Bethlehem. Okay? We got a wartime, war game killing. That's not, that's not thou shalt not kill. We'll look at that in a moment. 2 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 26. And when Joab was come out from David, he sent messengers unto Abner, which brought him again from the well of Sherah, but David knew it not. Abner had made peace with King David. Abner is going to Israel and say, hey, come on, let's join David. And when Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside from the gate to speak with him quietly. Hey, Abner, come here, Frank, I talk to you. And smote him under the fifth rib like Abner did to his brother Asahel in battle. That he died for the blood of Asahel, his brother. Joab had a personal vendetta of the death of his brother by Abner in 2 Samuel chapter 2 which was war games. This is a revenge. It's not a battle. It's not war. It's actually truly peacetime. According to what Abner met King David. And like, and after when David heard, it, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord forever from the blood of Abner, the son of Ner. Let it rest upon the head of Joab and his family. Verse 30. So Joab and Absalai, his brother, slew Abner. Now why was Absalai charged when Joab did the killing? Absalai had it in his heart. Absalai may not have physically killed Abner, but thinking about it, and maybe he kept encouraging Abner, I mean Joab, to do it. You can be charged with murder and not killing anybody by thinking about it. John says in, in his epistles, whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. But Joab and Absalom, his brother, slew Abner because he had slain their brother Asahel at Gibeon in the battle. So when Abner slew Asahel, it was in battle, it was in war. And when Abner physically killed 
I mean, when Joab, excuse me, when Joab physically killed Abner, it was not war. It was peacetime. And it was revenge. First Kings. Wasn't there a time when the Bible said that when there were kings that went forth to war? David didn't go. First Kings chapter 2. Verse 5. David talking to Solomon. More thou knowest who what Joab, the son of Zeruiah, that's their family. Zeruiah is David's aunt. No. David's sister, excuse me, did to me. And what he did to two captains of the hosts of Israel, unto Abner the son of Ner, we just read about that. That was revenge killing. And Amasa the son of Jether, whom he slew and shed blood of war in peace. And put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins. Ashiel was killed in battle. Joab sought revenge for the wartime killing of his brother in peace. Abner's not guilty of murder, and yet Joab is. First Kings. Uh, first King, um, Second Samuel again. That's what I want. Second Samuel, pardon me, verse twenty, uh, chapter twenty. Second Samuel twenty, verse six. And David t said to Abishai, "Now shall she, but the son of Barak, I do." Us more harm than Absalom. Overthrow the government again. Take thou thy Lord's servant, pursue after them, lest he get into a fenced city and escape us. Now went out after him Joab's men, the Cherites and the Pelalites, and all the mighty men, and they went up out of Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba the son of Barakai. Alright, they're going after a man because he's usurped the authority of the government. When they were at the great stone which is at Gibna, and Amasa went before them, and Joab's garment that he put on was girdled with him, and upon the girdle was a sword fastened to his loins in the sheep. Thereof, as he went forth, it fell out. And Joab said to Amasa, Thou art in hell. Are you okay, my brother? Everything well? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with the right hand to kiss him. But Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand, so he smote him there in the fifth rib and shed out his bowels to the ground. And stuck him not again, and he died. Verse 12, Amasa wowed in the blood. So this is again, this is the other murder. Now, this time, they are in battle. But the battle is not with a mesa. Try to find the name. It's with Sheba. So we have a battle. And in this battle, Joab actually kills a fellow soldier. And this soldier is killed because he didn't do what David told him properly to do. He took a little extra more time. So Joab took things in his own and he murders him. And he's charged with murder. Abner 
kills Asio in wartime and is not murdered. Joab slays Abner in rest, in peace, as a revenge, is murder. And in a battle in wartime against Sheba, Joab, who is a military commander, kills another fellow soldier commander. Not in relation to the purpose of the battle. And he's a murderer. Solomon told us so. David told us so. Exodus. Exodus 20. And, you know, the Jehovah Witnesses will say, Isaiah, there, and they shall put away their plowshares and beat their plow, you know, and, you know, what's written on the United Nations building. But that's the millennium. And Jesus spoke about peace and everything, and that's the millennium. We're not in the millennium. As a matter of fact, as far as Jesus goes, many of his ministry dealt with the centurions, Roman soldiers. One of the men that were witnessed to and saved according to the gospel by Peter was Cornelius in the Italian band. Paul had a ministry with the soldiers that kept him in bond. Exodus 20, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. And that's what, you know, thou shalt not kill, so we're not going to do military service. My personal opinion is you're cowards. Deuteronomy. And then you rest upon the privileges of our soldiers fighting. And they are protected by the Constitution that you cannot discriminate against, discriminate against a Jehovah Witness for their beliefs of not entering the military. You cannot ostracize them. Deuteronomy 7.2 And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them, people Canaan, before thee, thou shalt smite them, and utterly destroy them. That's God telling Israelites, when you go into the land of Canaan, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them, talking to the military of Israel. You got a big problem there, my friend. Jehovah of the Bible told his people, smite them and utterly destroy them, and Jehovah Witnesses say, well, no, our God calls us to peace. Violation of the scriptures, my friend. Violation of scriptures. So let's do something here. I'm going online to the Jehovah Witness Bible. New World Translation. And I'm just 1984. I'm just looking which one. 1984, 2013. 
nothing to do with 1984. So we want Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 2. And Jehovah your God will certainly abandon them to you. You must defeat them. You should without fail devote them to destruction. That, my friend, is the 1984 wor New World Translation of their Bible, and it says destroy them. Even the Jehovah Witnesses do not follow their own Bible. Now, I'm going back. And we'll take the 2013. Leviticus. Chapter 7. Verse 2. No, yeah, verse 2. They will slaughter the guilt of offering in the. Is this the right one? Leviticus? Oh, wait a minute, hold on. I'm in Leviticus. Deuteronomy 7. No, hold on. It's going slow. Alright, Deuteronomy 7 2. Jehovah your God will give them over to you, and you will defeat them, and you without fail devote them to destruction. All right, what are you going to do when your Bible, your New World Bible says, destroy them? And then cowardly you say, well, we can't join the military because we've got to be peaceful people. Open Deuteronomy chapter 7 and deal with those morons. Oh, man, that's the people in Utah. Romans 13. We're to obey God. So the government says, all right, we're going to war, we're going to draft you. Romans 13, 1, let every soul be subject to the higher power. The President of the United States says we have a draft. And if you get that draft paper, I don't know how they do it today, mail or text, whatever. You are subject to the powers of well, you know, going to war violates the Bible. It does not. Now, I don't know, but the Jehovah Witnesses have to, uh, I think when I was 16 or 18 year old male, I had to go, I forget what change, I had to go to the U.S. Post Office and I had to fill out a form. I forget what the name of the form. Every 16 year old or 18 year old male has to fill out this form. And it's a drafting order. I will obey the government. I have to turn myself into the government if the government say we're going to have a draft. Do Jehovah Witness males have to do that? Or are they exempt? Now my personal belief is, all right, you're exempt from a constitution order by the President of the United States in Congress and you disobligate yourself. All right, you disobligate yourself from the freedoms of this country. Now, freedoms of this country are given by God. But there have been men and women who fought and gave their lives in their blood. And if you're not going to give your life or offer to give your life in your blood, I believe you don't have the right. Let every soul be subject unto higher powers, for there is no power but of God. Oh, see, you know we're going to obey God. The powers that are, the, the powers that be are ordained of God. The president, the king, 
the queen, the prime minister, the governor. We're not going to do what the governor tells us to do. Then you're in violation of the scriptures, Christian. I was talking to Christians there. Whosoever there resists us to power. Well, we're not going to be drafted. You resist the power. Well, the Bible says we're not we're not to fight. Liar! And let me give you the Greek for liar. You coward. And you Bible rejecter. Whoso therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God. If that man or woman in charge of the government said, we're going to war. God authorizes every man and woman, verse 1, every soul. You obey that president, that king, that queen, that prime minister. I don't know what they, I forget what they call the, the Russian leader. You obey those powers. I don't want to go to Korea. Government says go to Korea. I don't want to go to Vietnam. Government says go to Vietnam. I don't want to go to Afghanistan. The government says go to Afghanistan. What does your God and your Bible say to do? Go to Korea, go to Vietnam, go to Afghanistan. What's this religious cult say? I don't want to go. Translate I don't want to give my life. I am afraid. And you resist the ordinance of God. Romans 13. It's plain and simple. It's plain and simple. Look at something here. Give me a moment. I'm going to look up some more things. I've got a couple more verses I, I want to do. That's what I want. Alright. Deuteronomy chapter 20. I knew there was another place. I didn't find it. Deuteronomy 20, verse 16, talking to the military, talking to the warriors of Israel. Deuteronomy 20, 16. But of the cities of these people, Cana, which the Lord thy God does give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth, even the animals and the snakes. I don't know if the grasshoppers breathe, but get rid of them, they breathe. But thou shalt utterly destroy them. The Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hittites, Jebusites, as the Lord thy God commanded thee. God commanded, said, you get rid of them by battle, you get rid of them by war. So what's a Jehovah Witness do when you run upon that? I'm coming back over here. Let me find it again. And I'm going to open up the Jehovah Witness Bible again, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 16.
This is their Bible. This is 2013. This is their Bible. Verse 16. 2016. But in the cities of these peoples, which Jehovah, you know, Jehovah Witnesses, your God is giving you as an inheritance, you must not allow any breathing thing to live. Instead, you shall devote them completely to destruction. So what are you doing teaching, oh, I'm not going to go in the military. And even your Bible, and we'll go, let's see, online Bibles, that's 2013. We'll go to the 1984. What are you going to do? You are violating your own scriptures. Because I believe you're a coward. Wait for it to come back up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me. Verse 20. Take a couple minutes here. And I'm quoting from their New World Translation. As it comes up. Alright. Deuteronomy 20. New world. And let me check. Deuteronomy 20. Verse 16. It is only of the cities of the people that Jehovah your God is giving you. As inheritance that you must not preserve any breathing thing alive. Because you should, without fail, devote them to destruction. So the world, New World Translation says, grab up your sword and fight. I guess the Jehovah Witnesses don't even follow their Bible. And we are told in the scriptures, study to show thyself approved unto God to rightly divide the word of truth and the Jehovah Witnesses don't. Don't. Now, there are 8, when I looked this up, 8,695,000 plus Jehovah Witnesses worldwide. And they teach there's no hell. Jesus taught there's a hell. They teach, oh, we're not to go into military. And yet we just read in the scriptures, military is Bible. Now it's funny because their publication is called Watchtower. Is it not? They will try to get you into a watchtower, not the Bible, because they don't follow the Bible. Anyone. And don't be fooled, they try to bring you a King James Bible. It may not even be the King James Bible, because there are King James Bibles out there that are not the King James Bible. And if my wife Tracy was alive, she would show you. A watchtower is a type of fortification, not fornication, fortification used by many parts of the world. It differs from a regular tower in that its primary use is military. The main purpose is to provide a high, safe place for the central air guard. So the watchtower that they peddle, and the definition of a watchtower is a military structure. Then ask them why don't they don't go into the military? Liars. 